today on behalf of IDEX Solutions and our partners at Dassault Systems. We'd like to welcome you to this webcast. The time has come to optimize CATIA V5 design with Inovia V6. Over the next 45 minutes, we'll provide information regarding the benefits of Inovia V6 for managing CATIA V5 engineering and data and activity. I'm your host, Tabon Thompson. I'm also joined with our product expert and senior, senior PLM applications engineer, Jim O'Brien. Today, our objective is to demonstrate to you the value of Inovia V6 IP lifecycle management tools through a live demonstration of Inovia Designer Central for CATIA V5. What you'll find is that Inovia V6 technology enables engineers and designers to reuse existing data, collaborate around it, and also to ensure that the entire enterprise is provided with one single version of the truth when going to manufacturing. Um, like I said earlier, we have a really tight agenda, so I'll just get into a quick introduction, then we'll uh, jump into a solution overview. Uh, Jim will drive the demonstration, uh, and then we'll also show you a, a video of the Microsoft integration, um, and then I'll talk to you a little bit about the scalability of Inovia and moving beyond just document management, and then we'll get into the, to, to the packaging and then conclude with a question and answers. Uh, what I'd like is for everybody to um, submit their questions via the WebEx chat. Uh, that way we'll queue up all the questions and we'll make sure that we ad adhere to our time schedule here. So real quick about IDEX Solutions. We've been doing business since 1996 as a value-added partner to Dassault Systems. We also have a well-established team of experts supporting both Dassault Systems software and PLM architecture, infrastructure, and implementation support. In addition to this, we also provide a wide variety of engineering services, including process consulting, data migration services, on and off-site design support, and we do quite a bit by way of CATIA automation and development. The solution or the, or the demonstration that we'll provide today will show you how CATIA V5 and Inovia V6 can be used to manage, share, and reuse V5 documents directly from the V5 interface. What's nice is that once the data is in the central infrastructure of Inovia V6, from there the information can be shared and published throughout the extended enterprise for bill material definition or other forms of program management. In large part, the solution was driven out of the necessity to continue to manage V5 information in a well-organized and efficient manner that complies with many of the large OEM's requirements for maintaining a well-defined document control process beyond the life term of a program. The SO system is committed to supporting CATIA V5 through at least 2020, but it's today that it's possible now to begin managing that, that information, that data, uh, on the 2.0 uh, PLM platform. Uh, which is Inovia V6. And using Inovia V6 with CATIA V5, it will also make that transition to CATIA V6 in the future a very smooth one. What we've realized is that when companies begin to manage their V5 data, their, their design with Inovia V6, they begin to uh, realize an increased level of engineering efficiency basically gain from the elimination of all the data synchronization problems. Um, there's also a reduction in the number of errors, which overall leads to improvements in design accuracy. Companies are also, through the use of Inovia, able to boost collaborative innovation by leveraging globally dispersed information from one common platform. The results of all these activities are a bottom line savings for our customers. 30% improvements in designer productivity through more efficient design management processes, 25% increase or improvement in design change management throughput, and 40% improvement in build material accuracy. Having the one centralized repository for design data, BOM, requirements, and program information, we're able to simplify system administration costs and, or simplify this, the administration and reduce overall total cost of ownership. This helps accelerate your, your return on investment. Um, our presentation today will really highlight Anovia Designer Central for CATIA V5. Designer Central is an immersive user interface for in, inside the V5 environment, 
allowing designers to get the benefits of a PLM system without modifying their processes. In fact, we could configure the system to, to work within your, the context of your processes very easily. Um, Designer Central, it, what it does is it, it provides the Anovia, the Anovia data management tools inside of CATIA, and it's from that interface that V5 designers can begin to manage the work and process data and also schedule reviews at any, any time during that product development process. Design data may also be organized and shared throughout uh, the enterprise by the use of both public and private workspaces and, uh, and published securely to your customers or suppliers or also to other non-CAD consumers of the data. Design Central, Designer Central enables visual collaboration around the design information beyond the CAD department. And like Designer Central for CIA V5, Anovia also extends this, this capability to the multi-CAD platform. Um, currently, Anovia Designer Central supports SolidWorks, Inventor, AutoCAD, Mechanical Desktop, MicroStation, SolidEdge, ProEngineer, NX, Mentor Expedition, Enterprise, um, Design Manager, Cadence Allegro, Zukin, and, uh, and possibly some others. If you have any questions about any of the multicast support, just uh, please uh, just send us questions. Um, basically, customers, they could choose to manage any of these ECAD or MCAD tools on the one single platform, giving designers uh, a choice on, on really what platform they want to collaborate in. Okay, we'll also show you um, part of the uh, Anovia web interface. Um, basically, Jim will he'll take you through it, and the, basically this just provides uh, the collaboration capabilities on the web for all participants using Anovia V6 outside of the CAD workspace. The web interface provides a search and view access to PLM managed data, including parts, viewable images, documents, bill of material information, requests for quotes, requirements, features, and engineering changes. We can, we can also restrict this, uh, this access to all that information based on the securities and controls or through the definition of, of the basic life cycle of the, of, of the product. The web, the web client also allows an interface point for all participants that are uh, all participants in, in the routes and the workflows uh, or any other automated process that's defined within the, the context of the database. It's from this, this database that non-CAD, it's from this interface that non-CAD users access 3D dashboards and all the Novia metadata. Okay, so uh, we're about to get into this demonstration, and just uh, in short, um, Jim's going to walk you through um, basically the search and access capabilities from V5. We'll also navigate a uh, product structure, show you how to access PLM information, and uh, also how to manipulate, create, and modify a design, how to save that, publish that out. And uh, with no further ado, let me go ahead and just flip it over to Jim. Sure. Thanks, Kaban. Can you hear me okay? Yep, sound good, thanks. Okay, good. So I'm gonna play through it pretty quickly. I'd love to take questions on the fly. Uh, if you guys know my demos, I like to respond to the questions, but just because of the compressed time here, we're gonna play through it pretty quickly. Looking at Katia version five integration into Anovia version six here. So, in this demo, we're going to look at how Katia version 5 can put data up into an OVA version 6 Designer Central, retrieve data, search, uh, look at the attributes that uh, an OVA Designer Central is uh, controlling and maintaining and how we can see that in Katia. So here in version 5 Katia, I'm just going to open a regular product file open, conventional off my hard drive to get started, something on the screen. Uh, some of this data is already in Anovia version 6, but um, we'll see that in a second. So here I'm going to connect to Anovia version 6. It is security-based, so they, uh, there's a, a little bit of configuration for security management, which means that I can see certain data up in the database and uh, be able to put data in the correct locations. 
so security context based. So I log in to the Novia version 6 pull down menu. Let me save this product up into the database. So I get a little save panel. This is the Anovia version 6 save as opposed to the file save, which we'll also be using. But Anovia version 6 recognizes two of these components as uh, brand new. Uh, some of the components are, are already in there. They're in the database, and actually they're locked and released. So these two new components here, the main top level main product and the machine part, are brand new. They're going to go up into the database as a.0 revision level. So at this stage, this is the out of the box configuration, and uh, there are all new components are going to get A.0. It doesn't let me adjust that, uh, but it knows those bushings are already in there, and I haven't modified them, so uh, that's why it's not offering me a save for them. So I say okay to that, and that data went up into the database. And already in my specification tree, I can see some of the attributes. So uh, Anovia version 6 is uh, managing my specification tree. Some of the properties are starting to show up, like the revision level. And the bushings there actually show a little padlock in the icon. A little red padlock is uh, showing those bushings are already known, and they're released, and they're locked. So let me show you the open panel. If I was just going to open another sub-assembly here, for example, uh, this is an OV version 6 open where I can uh, open by name. That search string there I can put in and search by name or other attributes, revision, state, owner. Uh, there's folders and workspaces, which I can organize. We'll talk about that some more. And uh, I can even open the data files that I've saved, you know, within the last seven days or something. So here's a search just by name. They found that subassembly. It's already up in the database. It's all rev. Zero, A.0, zero. I can see the attributes. And I can open that from the database down into Katia version 5. So instead of just regular file open, that was an Anovia version 6 open, where there's a little more visibility of the product structure and stuff. We'll see that in a minute. So uh, I'm just going to go through a little. I'm going to add this sub-assembly to the main assembly, do a little modification on the main assembly. But uh, that Anovia version 6 pull-down menu shows up with a uh, it is an extra integration. It's a little piece of software that gets, in, gets installed on top of Anovia version 5. And then you get that pull-down menu, and you get all the access to the uh, Anovia version 6 integration, all those tools like opening and searching and all that. So, yeah, I'm just putting this sub-assembly into this main product here, a little bit of arrangement, creating some constraints on the fly using SmartSnap. And now I've modified the main product. So let's see that save panel again. Hide the constraints. I've modified the main product. There's the sub-assemblies in there. And in Novi version 6 save, this time I did an advanced save. I want to explicitly control the revision level. So I, it, it wanted to go to an 8.1. That's the out-of-the-box configuration when you make a modification. But I just used the drop-down menu and chose to go to a major change, a major revision, and went to B.0. So let's see how those two main products, right, the two main products that I've been working with look. Can I see them both from the Anovia version 6 standpoint? I just did a search on by main, the you know, the string, search string. And there's A.0, no bracket on the back. And there's B.0, which shows the subassemblies in there. And the uh, thumbnail's been updated as well. So here, I want to show you that uh, even within this panel, the open panel, I can investigate individual components. So there's just one angle bracket, which is one individual component of that subassembly. And so I get all the exposure to those, uh, the product structure in the open panel even, where I can open individual components as needed. Uh, I'm going to make another little change to this component just to show you that uh, not only the revision levels can be, you know, major changes rolling to an, from an A to a B, but what if we had a minor change and uh, we wanted to roll, right? That was the, uh, the default behavior was just to roll a minor change. So there's just a minor change. It would still fit, you know, the ones with the hole or the ones with the slot. So it shows it's been modified. It already shows that it wants to go to an A.1. And if I'm fine with that, you know, I can leave it, A.1, and just commit that to the database. So what I want to show you now is, well, what happens with that 
with that geometry. I rolled it to an 8.1, but does that mean it's just hanging out there? Well, the out-of-the-box behavior for Designer Central is that change to that component is already incorporated. It's already in there. So the main product, B.0, already includes that modified single component, which I rolled to 8.1 there. So this is a little bit on folders. I wanted to show you that we can create standard part folders or other folders, workspaces and folders that arrange our geometry. I just created a little one here for bushings. Um, it's the same as far as file open, and I searched down a, uh, a workspace and a folder. So I can open that out of the database. Instead of just going and perusing, I can look into targeted directories, if you will. So I pulled this bushing out. It's also already known, as you saw in the database. It's a, it's a released part. It's, a, it's up in the database, and it's controlled and released. So I just pulled it out, uh, browsing to the folders and the workspaces. And I'm just going to arrange a couple of them here into the product structure. This isn't really, you know, the, the demo. I just wanted to show you, you know, the capabilities of modification to the product structure here and how... Uh, and Ovia version 6 can handle that. So quick little things here on the main product. Now it has two bushings, arranged them with constraints. And again, another major change, right, to the main product structure. So I'm going to, well, before I do that, before I save, uh, the bushing doesn't fit. Let's analyze that. And the bushing actually doesn't fit. So I'm going to go in and modify the bushing. The bushing came out, it's locked, it's released, but that doesn't mean I can't modify it. It means I can't save it, right? So we'll see that in a second. I won't be able to save that bushing back into the database. So here I'm going to modify the bushing. I'm actually going to take ownership of it. I'm going to make a change that I feel isn't just a revision, minor or major. Uh, I want it to be a brand new part. So here's, I'm just making a change here to the diameter of the bushing, barrel outer diameter. You'll see that I've updated, if I update the section here, I got the bushing in there, the right size now. So again, I don't think that's a minor change, I think, and I don't even think it's a revision to that mm, the standard part that's up in the database. I kind of think that is a, a major change, even major enough where I take ownership of this object. So I'm going to show you here that if I went to save the bushing right there, and nobody version 6 says, no, that was a uh, release part. You can't save over that. You could roll a major rev if I have authority to do that, which I do, but I don't want to. I think that's a brand new part. So just to take you through the, uh, the procedure, regular old version 5, how do I store a brand new part while working in assembly context? I change the part number there, conventional properties on the version 5 object. And then uh, regular file save is where it's going to be renamed as a new file, right? So regular file, I'm using save management, typical. I'm going to save it as a new part name. And really that's going to let version 6 know when I go back to a save here that it's a brand new part. It has a new you know, part name, and it's a new file at this moment. And when I push it back up into the database with an OVA version 6 advanced save, it's going to see that object now as a brand new part, the blue end there on the left the brand new part. And the main assembly, of course, got another change, two new bushings in there. So let's roll that to a C. Now I have a revision A with no bracket on the back, a revision B with a bracket on the back, and a revision C all up in the database. And uh, um, I can look at those. We have a tool in the Anovia version 6 pull-down menu. The geometry on the screen is the product structure the main product, revision C. So it was Anovia version 6, Explore in Anovia. And this opens the web-based viewer, the web-based interface into the data. Now, Devon mentioned that, uh, well, yeah, anyone, whether they're CAD users or not, can use this web-based interface to peruse the data. Of course, if they have security context to be able to see the data, then they can come in here and see the product structure, they can see the attributes, uh, what version it is, what release level, what state it's in, whether it's locked or not, who's own, who owns it, who's working on it. This is all available to anyone uh, with an Anovia version 6 base license, uh, not a CAD license, not a CATIA license, but all this is available 
for those users. Uh, and of course, anywhere you know through a web browser where they can get in. Even this tool. This is a uh, it's a viewer into the CAD geometry. Uh, it doesn't require CATIA. It's a viewer that uh, analyzes uh, where we can do some things. We can't design parts in here, but we can analyze it. We can create slides. We can create markups, which you'll see a couple coming up. Uh, we can measure. We can section. So uh, I'm not modifying the geometry here. I'm not modifying the product. Uh, I'm modifying the Anovia version 6 holder of the product structure. So I'm kind of putting this other layer on top, if you will, from the Anovia version 6 side of things. Um, so the Katia guy wouldn't see this markup, but if you were looking, which we'll look at a second, uh, if you look in the uh, web-based interface, we'll be able to see there's a markup against this uh, product structure from the Anovia side. And um, here's another slide created across the top. So it's a nice viewer. Again, it runs in a browser, um, so pretty flexible in that way. And uh, it's not a Katia uh, product. This is a viewer that comes with the web interface. Just creating some slides here. Maybe one more around the side, zoomed in. Just like canned stored views, right? Different ways if you wanted someone to come back in here and look at this. So yeah, measuring, sectioning, creating those markups and the slides, all part of this markup uh, thing that's attached to the Anovia version 6 object, not the product. I didn't modify the product. But I can propagate this markup back into Anovia version 6 and when we come out of that viewer, we'll even see that that, so I'm still on the product, Rev C, and it has a markup against it. So that stuff's available. Part of this demo, I also wanted to show the CATIA guys who, like me, may be a little fearful of a uh, PDM system being uh, kind of in the way. That's my fear, anyhow. Uh, I wanted to disconnect from the Novia version 6 to show you that CATIA version 5 is fine with that, right? If I disconnect, uh, what can I do? Well, I mean, it's just like I'm working file-based right now. I have these files out of the Novia version 6, and I'm working them. I can do my regular old assembly design. I'm just going to create another one of these sub-assemblies, snap it up to the upper two locations there. But in Novia version 6 at this time, is it, of course, it's not watching what I'm doing. It's not, uh, I'm not connected. So all of this is really offline, if you will little change here. But what I'm going to show is it's not that big a deal. Uh, when I come back and I reconnect to a Novia version 6, so I'll save it locally, which I like to do often, right? Regular Katia version 5, save, save often. Hide a couple pushing. And then I'm going to reconnect to a Novia version 6 and see how a Novia version 6 responds to that change. So again, based on security context with the login, the Novia version 6 is going to look at my active Katia version 5 session, and it already has updated the tree. Those hex bushings are, have locks on them again. And when I go to advanced save, it says, oh, well, you've actually modified the main product. So again, I could roll to a C.1 or a D.0 there, and I'll choose to roll to a D.0. So it, it, right, if we disconnect, it's not that big a deal. You reconnect, and Ovia version 6 will keep you up to date with what's going on in the session. Here's that look in the file open panel again, just mm, what has gone on, A.0, B.0, the bracket, C with two bushings, and D.0. And, of course, all expandable. I can see all those components in all the product structure. So I really wanted to cover um, just the fact that the, the product, Designer Central, Novi version 6, Designer Central, it's nice, it, it's clean, it keeps you uh, organized, keeps your data in one place, and, it, and it's not intrusive. It's really behind the scenes instead of firing uh, locally, we can save the data up into the database. So I'm sure there's hopefully lots of questions about that stuff, and we'll have lots of follow-ups. But for now, back to the presentation. All right, thanks, Jim. That was great. Hopefully, um, you guys saw how easily Anova V6 could, could manage that, that V5 information. 
in our next segment, we're going to shift gears a little bit. We want to demonstrate to you the, the Microsoft product integration uh, for Anovia. Basically, the Anovia tools will now appear natively inside those Microsoft applications. Uh, the collaboration for Microsoft piece supports Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, uh, Windows Explorer, um, as well as desktop search. So we, by adding those capabilities to the Microsoft products, we're able to um, enable the, the entire enterprise to collaborate maybe a little bit more efficiently and, and not really disrupt you know, the current way that, uh, that those users um, produce information. So we, we prepared a short little video. I'm going to let, let Jim take you back through that. Okay, thanks, Devon. Fire this guy off. So yeah, here we are in Microsoft Word, and with a little integration here, we have an Anovia version 6 pull-down menu, just like we had in Kia version 5. Same thing, Anovia version 6 pull-down menu, where we have a login. Should be getting used to this, right? The PDM, VPM system, we uh, we log, have to log in to get our security contacts to make sure we can see the appropriate data files, in this case, document files that we want to be able to look through and navigate and save into the right location. So, uh, yeah, that was just login. Now we're connected. There's a login out if we wanted to choose that, and now we're connected. Same as uh, I did in the demo for V5 there. We'll just create a new document here and see how that looks going up into the Novi version 6 database. Put a little information on here so we can check it out as we go. So this is a brand new document, right? It is locked in a sense. I have it locally. No one else is working on it. So there's no save button, but there's a save as. Uh, save as will come up. It hasn't been saved before into the database. So instead of using file save, we have the Novi version 6 save. And, uh, and now we get a save as uh, screen where we can fill out certain things. Uh, we can choose what kind of policy this document follows as it resides in the database. Uh, we can name it. Uh, that's going to be the name of this uh, document. We can put it into an Anovia version 6 workspace and folder. Again, an arrangement, a, uh, a tool that allows you to put these files, these documents, where you want them to go. Of course, security-based. Uh, and I have certain access to certain to, uh, certain folders there. So a couple options, auto name, I turn that off and delete local file and uh, retain the lock, which we'll see in a second. So that object's going up in the database now. Uh, just hit create there. And there's the good sign, right? Green flag, that document is now up in the database being saved. Um, we're going to query the database in a second to see how that document looks. But, uh, yeah, just like that with the regular save there, and it went up into the database. So let's look at the way, a little query about revisions and versions here. So the, the Anovia version 6 document holder, and then the Word document down inside. So we'll talk about that more in a second. Um, we're going to be able to see all the different versions, if you will, of this document up in the Anovia version 6 document holder. So here, I'll just make a change so we can see a couple versions here. So let me lock this. I don't want to create another new one, right? It's not going to be a save as. So I'm going to lock it so that I can save over the old one. So that's kind of preventing anyone else be, to be able to save over the one we we're working on. So every time, if I want to save it, I just create another one. And here's a, another version. Just get a couple of them in there so we can see how the Anovia version 6 uh, holder, if you will, of these Word documents is uh, saving it. That time I chose to close my local file, so it, it's just like uh, file close after the save. So this is the file open. So how do these things look now from the Anovia version 6 standpoint in file open? Here are the workspaces, and here are the folders, which, uh, again, security context based. Uh, we can only see certain folders. There's the Anovia document holder, and then that's the Word document right there. Now, this only looks like there's only one version. What's the latest version? We're going to look at a second uh, from the Anovia side uh, and get a display of all the versions. And remember, we have this pull-down menu here, Anovia version 6 
revision versions, which would actually show us that the Anovia placeholder, which is at Rev0, actually there's two versions in there. We just happen to be working on the second version. So we do get a display, but the file open panel is going to bring out the latest version uh, using that tool right there. So let's put one more up there so we have a little bit more information to work with, and then we'll go look at it up inside uh, Venovia using, again, that web-based thin client uh, that anyone can use, right? Even if they don't have Word, uh, they could use the web-based thin client. So let's just put another one up into the database lock. So I can save over it again, create another version, make a comment if I want. That shows. We'll see the comments in there. Delete the local files, which is just like file save and then file close. Delete the uh, file if it's stored on your local hard drive. So, yeah, let's look at how the that document and the, all the versions are available in, with the web interface. So, again, the web interface login. This is connecting to the thin client. Workspaces, just uh, my Anovia workspaces. Again, security context space, what workspaces can I see on the screen available to me. The folders in the workspaces, again, just organizational tool. You can grant permission and such to certain users and certain other users. And there's our document there. That's the Anovia placeholder, that document. It's a Rev0. And then there's three versions in there, all stored in the Anovia database. On the right side, those actions, right, those are actions where we can do stuff like uh, any user could subscribe to events on this document. So if anyone revised the document, they could get an email notification. That's the middle icon. Uh, there's a straight download icon there. And the, the icon in the far left, that's uh, auto view. So even if you didn't have Microsoft Word, if you had auto view installed, then you could at least peruse the data. So um, that's the interface we wanted to show, uh, Microsoft Office integration. Uh, that's, that was the Microsoft Word, you know, integration where we got the pull-down menu. But uh, as Devon mentioned, uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, they're all going to have that pull-down menu, and you're going to be able to store and retrieve and manage those documents up into the database. So um, I think that's what we want to show on the Office integration right now, Devon. Okay, great. Thank you again. So now uh, I will shift our attention a little bit to um, to more of the scalability of of Anovia, uh, and, we'll, and we'll start that by um, discussing a little bit about Engineering Central. So basically, in a nutshell, Anovia Cent Anovia Engineering Central um, is a manager for both CAD and non CAD documents. And what basically, in, once all the information inside the database, it provides that that single version of the truth, and we're able to consolidate all this information and, and begin managing all those activities, including the engineering data, the processes, all the technical documentation, all on on one single platform at the enterprise level. Um, some of the key capabilities available for um, Engineering Central are the ability to create engineering bill of material, also uh, EBOM navigation. We can also prepare our EBOM for manufacturing. Um, the module also comes with out-of-the-box templates for uh, ECR and ECO. Basically, they've incorporated a number of best practices from some of the world's largest companies um, and kind of bundled those into, uh, into the templates. Um, we have full capabilities for ECR and ECO uh, reporting, including summary reports, matrix reporting, uh, late approvals reports. Engineering Central also has a very comprehensive bomb reporting aspect to it. it um, we could report on a multi-level e-bomb um, bill of material comparison or bomb compare, and uh, also parts where used. Anovia Engineering Central may also be integrated with, with your current ERP system for customers that, that are using ERP. When I think of Engineering Central, I think of it as, as that synchronization manager that handles all the information being exchanged from the CAD world to the build material, and vice versa. From Engineering Central, enterprise stakeholders, they could 
begin to evaluate design changes earlier in a product's development, giving full consideration to the complete assembly by aggregating that BOM information from mechanical, electrical, software disciplines. And if necessary, if there's changes, um, we could orchestrate those through those different engineering communities and then and then reseek our build materials at the at the level of the enterprise. Those uh, build material information may also be published um, pushed from Engineering Central back to the CAD platform for uh, for full product structure development. Uh, it's in Engineering Central that project or, or product engineers that could configure uh, the e bomb, um, basically adding any additional bomb items, completing that bomb record before publishing it out. One other um, option for, uh, for ANOVIA is the Program Central. ANOVIA Program Central manages scheduled tasks for the project team. ANOVIA Program Management supplies really the backbone infrastructure for scheduling and planning all project-dependent activities, including managing contacts, requirements, deliverables, and resources. A project work breakdown structure could be decomposed into smaller management projects for greater control, and an uh, interdependent task could also be defined, and so as predecessor tasks are completed, we could send out email, automated email messages to the signees of the dependent tasks. Um, there's also a resource planning module, and that portion really allows for, um, for control uh, for, for the program managers. Basically, you could allocate resources and determine their availability um, in order to estimate your, your project funding in, uh, in time and delivery. So, uh, Program Central also provides real-time program planning, monitoring um, through the use of 3D dashboards, program matrices, and risk and opportunity management reporting features. And another option that you have for Novia is uh, with the Requirement Central. Novia Requirement Central is used for capturing requirements data. Product managers could use the source documents to create requirements and specifications inside Novia for downstream applications. PMs can now import those requirements from Microsoft Word or Excel and maintain tra traceability back to that source document for each of the items captured. Novia Requirement Central enables organizations to really drive consistency um, through the use of a shared environment when, cus when capturing the customer's requirements or regulatory standards. These, re these requirements can be, they can be defined and fulfilled all the way through the design and testing of a product and, and really provide you with, with uh, traceability uh, into that development uh, cycle. Go ahead and skip to the next slide there, John. Sure. sure. Um, so just real short, in, in, in summary, you know, I, I just wanted to explain, you know, there's there's certainly some some benefits to having one centralized database, and, and really it's in the increased efficiency that, that the companies are able to, to gain by eliminating a lot of data synchronization problems. We know where things are when we need them, um, and, uh, and it's managed very, very efficiently. Um, we could also reduce a number of errors and, and improve overall design accuracy, and, and also boost collaboration and, and innovation by leveraging the information that's readily available in real time globally, not just locally now. Um, and we could also scale this solution by incorporating things like the Engineering Central for Bob Management, ECO and ECR changes, or Program Central for, for Program Management, or requirements management for uh, with the with the requirement central piece. So Adobe basically offers one single infrastructure for all these various disciplines, simplifies the administration, reduces total cost of ownership. One thing I wanted to mention to all of you that that may be considering this as, as a potential solution. Obviously, uh, you're you're probably the V5 today, but um, by by beginning to manage your information. In Anovia v V6, um, it, it provides you an opportunity to also move to the 
the CATIA V6 uh, at a later time, and it will be a very, very smooth transition. So um, that's just one of the benefits that you have. So packaging. So you may be asking, you know, how how do we get how do we get this? Well, for existing customers that have PLM Express, there is a migration opportunity for those customers. We could actually uh, trade in your existing for uh, for a new configuration of um, of the same product. But instead of uh, having Smart Team bundled with your PLM Express, you would have the Inovia component. Um, as Jim alluded to earlier, Microsoft integration is, uh, is one of the standards that you receive as, as part of that. Um, and new, new fee purchases of PLM Express can be purchased with this option as well. So um, if you're planning any additional purchases um, and are considering Adobe V6 as opposed to Smart Team, um, those, those products are now bundled and, and available. Okay, and uh, quick start. So for for customers wanting to roll this out, um, we've come up with a, with a quick start deployment. And basically, what the quick start entails is uh, it's, it's 12 days implementation. It's, well, it's really 10 days of implementation and two days of training. Uh, during that training, we'll we'll work with the designers and non-designers or non-CAD users um, on all the essentials that they need for for doing their jobs as well as uh, really showing you how to work with, uh, with Inovia. So um, basically the way that the process kind of unfolds is that, um, you know, we'll have a conversation. We'll understand a little bit more about your requirements. Uh, we'll identify key people within your organization. And then uh, and we'll review with you what's, what's available out of the box. And then, um, and then we can talk about any, any other tailoring that, that, that you may need in order to, to accommodate your processes. Okay, this is uh, just how you connect with us. If, if you're not familiar with us, we're headquartered in Portland. Um, and there you see a toll-free number. You could also always send an email to sales at idexsolutions.com or support at idexsolutions.com. And we'll, we'll give those uh, whatever information is that you need over to you. So, um, okay, let's go ahead and skip over to the, to the questions. Um, Jim, I, I have a question here from uh, from our fellows over at CIRCOR. What do you like about uh, Novia Designer Central? Well, from my standpoint, I'm a designer, and uh, I don't. I've always feared a PDM system getting in my way. So, in my opinion, this, this is the first one I've seen that um, basically, instead of file saving locally on a file system. I can file save as quick and as nice and as efficient up into the database. And there's no nagging pop-up screens or anything. It's just as clean and fast. And uh, I, I can then get to my data that I want to, the, you know, just as clean and just as fast. So in my opinion, it's, it's, it's just as nice as file saving locally, but yet it's going to give all those PDM things that we're after. Like everyone can see the data from the database. Other users can see it right away. And of course, the release process and routes and all other things that we can attach to it, life cycles, if we want to. Okay. James, are you on the call this afternoon? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, James. James is our Anovia. Uh, he's our Anovia expert. Uh, with respect to uh, the implementation architecture, here's here's some for you. What type of hardware will we need to install and, and run what what we've shown here? Well, uh, for a quick start that we talked about, um, it's fairly simple, uh, easy to set up, doesn't require a lot of hardware. There's a couple different options you can go with. Uh, you can use either hardware-based install or you can do a VM-based install if you're familiar with VMs. Uh, VMs are, are real easy to uh, update to, so keep that in mind. Um, again, it's, it's a real basic install. One thing uh, you'll have to remember is if you do it on a VM and you have a license server, you have to have a separate license server for that. 
So you're either going to use FLUM or DSLS. <clears throat> so that'll take another machine altogether. Um, so pretty much you can install it on one server. I would suggest something like an R710 by Dell with the dual quad core processors. Um, and then using an iSCSI link to a SAN for your, for your um, storage. And then for our larger implementations, we're going to have to go with the multi-server implementation um, with high availability as well. And, and that kind of implementation can vary widely depending on the organization. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's another question. Um, what about CATIA NC programming? Is that supported? Um, I'll take that one. That's uh, that's a that's a yes. That's a definite. Pretty much everything inside CATIA V5, including machining, composite, sheet metal, um, all those things can now be managed on on the V6 platform. Additionally, if you're using V5 for machining, you could also um, you, you also have an opportunity to migrate those those programs to V6 machining um, if you so desire to do so. Here's another one for you, James. Uh, can, I, can, can we let suppliers or customers access data on Anovia? Yes, uh, there's several ways that you can do that. Uh, you can share data outside your company um, with an OEV6. Uh, since the server is, is web-based access, uh, the easiest way is to define users with limited access. Um, you can share the data via the web login worldwide, and they can connect. Um, and you can do as little, you can tie them down with permissions based as little as possible or as much as you want depending on what you'd like. And you can also set your server up to use HTTPS if you're concerned about your data. And then there's, there's other offerings as well for securing your data um, over the internet as well. Um, so the real benefit of, of using this um, over standalone is that standalone you have to export your data and import it into another company. Whereas with, with Anovia v6, it's all web-based and again, and at the same time, or it's uh, same data using real time, so you don't have to worry about uh, uh, obsolete data, um, getting the wrong wrong modifications and things like that. Um, you can also set up subscriptions. I think Jim might have talked about that earlier with uh, MSF. But you can set up subscriptions to a part where it notifies you if there's been a change to a part via email, so that uh, say I'm working on a part and then somebody else opens it up and they make a change to it, it'll notify me via email and let me know that that part has been changed. Excellent. Excellent, thank you. Hey, Jim, what version of CATIA is, uh, are, are supported currently with, uh, with, the, with the Novia V6? With Designer Central, it's V5R19 and above. Uh, V5R19 and R20 take a little service pack, one of the later service packs, but um, uh, the newer version releases of V5, R21 and R22 uh, and R23 um, work right away. Great, great. Great. Okay, here's another one. Um, if we decide on adding Engineering Central, um, is that included in the quick start? Um, actually, the, the the answer there is no. The quick start is really for for the Microsoft integration as well as the Designer Central piece. Um, really getting control of of of, of the data, um, really data management. Um, Engineering Central is a little bit more involved. It's 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 not it's not a number of it's not weeks. It's probably you know a matter of days, if if not maybe a week. Um, to, to enroll uh, Engineering Central along with this. Um, and basically what, what Engineering Central provides is that ability for uh, ECO and ECR and those those uh, those routes and those workflows, as well as uh, all the bill of material uh, synchronization from, from the CAD product side to um, to the, basically to the enterprise bomb level. So. Okay. 
think that's about it for uh for all the questions that we that we have. I'd like to uh first of all just say thanks to uh to Jim and also for uh for the community of, of subscribers that have uh, taken the time out of their day to join us. Um as you know, we we tend to offer a number of webcasts throughout the year. Um so stay tuned to um to find out what's next. That's all that I have prepared. If uh, if you have any other questions or concerns, by all means, uh, please uh, email Jim or myself. Uh, you could also send uh, an email to sales or contact us via the 800 number, or also um, or support at idexsolutions.com. So again, I really appreciate your time. Um, hopefully, you got some value out of today's presentation, and I, I again I appreciate you guys joining. Have a great day.